It's amazing that there is so much life advice at the tips of our fingers at all times. With life being as chaotic and unpredictable, knowing that someone can lend us a helping hand can be comforting. But what happens when that helping hand just places us on another hazardous path? These are a few pieces of empowering advice that can do more harm than good. If you live by this advice, we don't wanna make you feel bad. There are nuggets of truth in everything. Our goal for today is to find some perspective and be a little skeptical of the mantras we adopt in life. One, disguising bad behavior as just being yourself. Part of the beauty of being yourself is the freedom it gives you to grow, learn, and improve yourself over time. However, it can be tempting to embrace the notion of being unapologetically yourself no matter what and take it to an extreme. When your behavior and actions are hurting others, it's time to self-reflect. No one should hate you just for being you, but we should all be open to constructive feedback. Ultimately, there is a line that should be drawn between embracing yourself while being aware of your flaws and being willfully ignorant as a means for selfish behavior. You wouldn't tell a bully what they're doing is okay as long as they're just being themselves, right? Yes, it's important to be yourself and be honest with yourself, but it's also crucial to consider other people's feelings. In the end, balance is key. Two, you don't need anyone. Getting through life is inherently challenging. Wanting to face that challenge head on and push through no matter what is admirable. But there is no single way to face life's challenges. So if you think you don't or shouldn't rely on anyone, that just isn't true. Our entire history as a species only exists because of people relying on one another. We need support for everything in life. Whether you don't wanna ask someone for help in physical tasks or you don't wanna burden someone with your emotions. Having a support system is necessary and doesn't make any of your achievements less impressive. According to psychologist, Dr. Annie Tennis-Sugarn, having this mentality can make it extremely difficult to communicate effectively, which can jeopardize your relationships. You aren't a bad person for feeling like it's you against the world or for suppressing your emotions or vulnerability. This behavior indicates a trauma response or an avoidant attachment style and may be difficult to unlearn, but doing away with the lone wolf mentality might just be the freeing decision that changes your life for the better. Three, it's all about your looks. We see memes, TikToks, videos, and video essays all the time about pretty privilege and how it changes how people treat you, which has made a lot of us more focused on our looks than ever. Sure, confidence can come from anything, and what makes you feel confident is uniquely yours. If the thing that makes you confident is maintaining your good looks, that's great, but be careful not to adopt the belief that what looks beautiful is inherently good. Pushing other things aside because you're prioritizing your beauty can start to take a toll on your life. Feeling good, being physically healthy, and having good self-esteem can benefit you greatly. But becoming obsessive or judging others for not having high aesthetic ambitions won't help you get through life any easier. It's undeniable that pretty privilege is very real in some corners of society, but pursuing beauty obsessively can stunt your personal growth. Not to mention it can affect your health for the worse. Obsessions with beauty have been known to lead to issues like eating disorders and extreme fatigue. Some researchers suggest that each person should decide what is beautiful for them and pursue that for the sake of their own confidence and happiness, rather than trying to fit into one specific standard or just to get people to like you more. Four, positive vibes only. Nobody wants to be the friend who's always a downer. Growing up, you might've been taught that being happy and agreeable is correct, while being upset, sad, or stubborn is incorrect. This can lead to you getting used to hiding your real feelings and never truly opening up to your friends in fear of looking like a Debbie Downer. Forcing yourself to be happy can start to negatively affect the way you see the other people in your life. You might find yourself getting unreasonably annoyed when people open up emotionally to you or express any negative feelings. This can alienate people and make them feel like they can't rely on you. No one is happy all the time, and that's what makes the happy moments so much sweeter. A study published in the Journal of Psychology and Instruction found that people with toxically positive attitudes were seen as ignorant and lacking empathy. 
Ironically, toxic positivity just seems to make people angry. It's a sweet sentiment to want everyone to be happy, but no matter how much we wish everyone could choose to be happy, it just doesn't work like that. Ranting or crying with someone can alleviate those feelings and build intimacy with that person. Positive vibes are great, but a well-rounded life, embracing the good and the bad with people who are close to you is even better. And five, never care what other people think. Everyone has an opinion and caring about everyone's opinion about you or the things you do can be so draining. Not only that, you'd lose yourself trying to please everyone. So you might've received the advice that you just shouldn't care what other people think ever. When this advice is taken to the extreme, it's bound to breed more problems. By never taking other people's opinions into account, you might become uncooperative and difficult to deal with. Maybe you're okay with being uncooperative, but a lot of the best things we do in life and the way we make the most growth is by listening to what others think. A musician or artist doesn't improve without feedback from others. If you feel like you shouldn't care about what other people think, it's possible that you lack trust in people, possibly as a result of being disappointed by a significant other or your parents, or dealing with naysayers, fake friends, or haters. Opinions can hurt us a lot, but we need to learn how to filter out these opinions and identify whether the criticism is constructive or destructive. Constructive criticism can help you grow and improve while destructive criticism only aims to bring you down. For example, constructive criticism can sound like your presentation was informative, but adding more visuals could make it even more engaging. On the other hand, destructive criticism might sound like your work is so terrible that you'll never improve no matter what you do. So instead of never caring what people think, take what they say with a grain of salt and be open to feedback. Watching self-help videos is great, but sometimes advice can be too blunt or too unaccommodating. You can get good advice from just about everyone, but sometimes what seems empowering on the surface actually makes us meaner and enforces negative attitudes. When we incorporate advice like this, it can take years to unlearn it. In the meantime, we stagnate and never truly embrace the opportunity to move past the circumstances that made us adopt that advice in the first place. Do you think there is such thing as bad advice or are there nuggets of truth in everything? If you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to Psych2Go for more videos like this. Leave some good advice that helped you and it might just help someone else. See you next time, Psych2Goers.